the responsorial psalm. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Our first reading from Romans and Gospel reading from Luke for today also speak of the joy of obedience to God's call. I think it's fair to say that obedience is not a popular virtue in our times or cultural moment. Last week, the PBS NewsHour reported on the Great Resignation, the recent movement of workers out of their steady and stable jobs during the past 18 months of the pandemic. Many of the people interviewed cite concerns over health and safety, as well as compensation and quality of life as reasons for their own resignation. Having changed jobs myself in the past months, I'm not about to pass judgment. However, I'd like to use both the readings and the memorial of today to reflect on obedience to God's calling, which I believe can be observed in the ways we practice sticking with this calling. From his letter to the Romans, Paul writes, for just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. Jesus, the new Adam, is the exemplar of obedience to God. In the gospel passage from Luke, Jesus advises through a parable to be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. We are instructed to be like these dutiful servants. But what to make of these lessons in a cultural moment that elevates individualism and autonomy to a virtue defined by going it alone? Today we hear these readings while commemorating the memorial honoring the lives and witness of Saints John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues, and their companions, also known as the North American Martyrs. In fact, I'm recording today from the Chapel of Our Lady on the campus of Georgetown Preparatory School, the Jesuit boarding school in North Bethesda, where I serve on the theology faculty. In order to show you here above the entrance, this uh, beautiful engraving of the North American martyrs. These men came of age in the early years of the 17th century. The world had been growing smaller and more interconnected for at least a hundred years at this point. Both left the comforts of home to spread the faith to the indigenous people of North America. They embraced the culture of the Huron people, learning their language and customs. Now, of course, I must acknowledge that a full reflection could be made about the folly of centuries old missionary efforts, the decimation of indigenous cultures and people during the age of European expansion, especially a week after our country celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day. However, in my view, we cannot and should not ignore the heroic example of the North American martyrs because we still have so much we can learn from them from their model of Christian obedience to their calling. First, John de Brebeuf and Isaac Jogues offer us inspirational examples of a commitment to something greater than yourself. The psalmist writes, to do your will, God, is my delight. While these men could have lived full lives of comfort and safety, they pursued a mission that culminated in martyrdom all for the greater glory of God. To what cause or purpose am I willing to sacrifice everything? Many of these workers in the great resignation were asking this question. Do I find purpose and meaning in my current work or is there something more? Second, these martyrs exemplify the heroism of missionaries. Heroism is not reserved for famous people or comic book characters with superpowers. Rather, we can all be heroic by practicing persistence and courage, sticking with our mission, obedient to our calling, especially when it is difficult, and maintaining the strength of conviction and purpose 
in the face of fear. Finally, the North American martyrs model ways of persisting by remaining obedient through suffering. Isaac Jogues was tortured and maimed, but after convalescing in the comforts of home in France, he returned to his mission in New France in North America and ultimately met his death as a martyr. We may not experience torture or death for the faith, but the suffering of life tests us and our faith. The sudden and unexpected death of a loved one or the slow death to cancer or Alzheimer's disease or an accident or illness that could transform our lives forever. Likewise, we may hit a dry point in our career, a midlife crisis, or the fear of an unknown life after retirement. What meaning will we find in and beyond our work? How strong are our relationships? These moments of doubt, desolation, and suffering can shake our faith, that is, our belief in the basic fundamental goodness of life and in God's unique calling to each of us. Rather than flee the suffering, we can, like Isaac Jogues, return to it, persist, and show courage. We can and must stick with our calling to the people we serve through our work, to the professional relationships with our colleagues, to the personal relationships with friends and family, God calls us into relationship. To be obedient, then, is a response to this calling. Practicing obedience is practicing an ongoing stick with itness with all of the people, from friends and family to strangers and those yet unknown in our lives. Let me suggest continuing your meditation throughout the day on these two lines. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Saints John de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogues, and companions, pray for us.